proud of our building here in Edinburgh. It's a magnificent example of a Victorian townhouse, one of a few still remaining intact in Edinburgh city centre. Most of these have long since been turned into flats and apartments. And this one was built originally as a family home, all six floors of it. It has a magnificent staircase. Indeed, half of the volume of the house is in the staircase and a beautiful domed ceiling. Because you see, this was the home of William McEwen, of the Fountain Bridge Brewery and of the Best Buy and Beer. So it was beer money that built this magnificent home. So let me show you around. This is our sanctuary. This is where the Spiritualist Church holds their services twice a week. And as you will see, Arthur Conan Doyle has pride of place here either side of the platform at the head of the church. So Arthur Conan Doyle takes pride of place amongst the other pioneers of spiritualism represented here in the sanctuary. And here is just one example. This is Daniel Dunglass Hume, who lived in Collington in Edinburgh. And in actual fact, he was ages with Arthur Conan Doyle's mother. And she knew him. Indeed, Arthur wrote to his mother about Daniel Dunglass Hume and said he was a noble man and would go down in history. Now, Hume's claim to fame as a medium is one of levitation. He once famously levitated out of a window in a third floor building and floated along the outside of the building and re emerged through another open window further down the corridor. So, that was uh, one of our pioneers. So, welcome to our library. And of course, Arthur Conan Doyle is most famous for writing this. This is the story of Sherlock Holmes. But he's less famous for writing this. This is the history of spiritualism, volumes one and two. And whilst Sherlock Holmes became the bane of his life, indeed, he tries to kill off Sherlock Holmes at one point until his mother tells him to resurrect him. And of course, he always did what his mother told him. But the history of spiritualism, on the other hand, was most important for him to document before he died, and clearly he did. And these are not religious books, he was a historian after all, so this is indeed the history of spiritualism, of how it came to be. So given that Arthur Conan Doyle was a spiritualist and he dedicated the final years of his life to promoting spiritualism, travelling throughout the world and to every major UK town promoting his beliefs of spiritualism, we felt that when we got such a grand building such as this, it would be a fitting tribute to name it after such a great man here in his hometown of Edinburgh. At least that's what I've been telling people up till now. If you want to know the real story behind why we called this the Arthur Conan Doyle Centre, then this is the book you need to read. This is Arthur and me telling for the first time the true story of Arthur Conan Doyle communicating from beyond the grave, leading us to find this building and dedicate it to spiritualism and spiritual activities in his name, in his hometown, in Edinburgh. So as well as many interesting books in our library, we also have a very interesting painting here by James Stuart Smith. It's been in our possession for over a hundred years. It was actually started by one artist and finished by another. And you will find in this painting symbolism from most mainstream religions as well as spiritualism. And it depicts good triumphing over evil. So follow me and let's look at the rest of the building. So before we go upstairs, let's have a sneak peek into the Sherlock Holmes tea room. 
and here you will find the deerstalker hat on the hat stand together with his rolled umbrella but unfortunately he's just popped out for a moment. As you can see he's left his pipe behind but not only that he's left his birth certificate and a letter to Joe Bell crediting him with being the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes. So the property was built in 1881 and we believe that William McEwen had a hand in the interior design because it is by far one of the grandest buildings in the street. The door cases you will see are an Adam style on the ground floor but by the time we reach here on the second floor they've changed design and that perhaps was to allow the images of William McEwen and his daughter to be depicted above the doors. His illegitimate daughter, Margaret, because you see when William McEwen bought this house, he was a single man and it was convenient for him to live in boarding houses in Edinburgh whilst he was running the Fountain Bridge Brewery. However, in one of these boarding houses, he got the chambermaid pregnant. Now, as an Edinburgh statesman and head of the Fountain Bridge Brewery and a Lord Lieutenant of Edinburgh, that was not the done thing at all. Edinburgh society would have taken a real dim view of him. So he hatched a plan. One of his porters in the Fountain Bridge Brewery had the name of William Anderson, the same surname as the chambermaid. She was Helen Anderson. So he paid for William Anderson, who was a married man with children, to take his pregnant girlfriend, Helen Anderson, to London, where McEwen hired a house for them to live as husband and wife. William Anderson looked after Helen Anderson until she had the baby in London and then Helen Anderson returned back to Edinburgh with a story that her husband had died and she had been widowed. William Anderson, he returned to his wife and kids in Fountain Bridge. When William Anderson died, he left a little note saying he had spent a lifetime legitimising William McEwan's illegitimate daughter. Margaret. So he depicted Margaret above the doorway as well. And she was 18 when he bought this house. But he must have loved Helen Anderson because he married her. And they moved into this house as the first family home. But he couldn't marry her until after his mother died and his sister died thereby allowing him to marry beneath himself. So this is the Helen Duncan room, named after a famous or perhaps infamous medium. You can read all about her later, but this is our main function room. And of course, it would have been McEwen's drawing room as well. He held many great civic parties um, and functions here in his home. So, are there any other connections between Arthur Conan Doyle and this building? Well, as well as being a statesman, a philanthropist, a brewer, William McEwen was also a successful MP. And he was MP for the Central Edinburgh constituency, this one here, where he had his home built. And apparently he was very successful because he was returned unopposed for a second term of office and he gained the vote of the Temperance Society. So as a brewer, he was doing okay. However, when he decided to retire from politics in 1900, it was none other than Arthur Conan Doyle who ran for William Coon's vacated seat here in Edinburgh. And we knew nothing of this when we bought this building. We just bought a derelict, empty building, not knowing who had owned it before. Arthur Conan Doyle ran for William McEwen's vacated seat in politics, and now William McEwen's vacated home is the Arthur Conan Doyle Centre. So we have a large picture of Arthur Conan Doyle outside this building, and tourists take pictures, and they're rushing here, and they'll ask me, was this Arthur Conan Doyle's house? 
and I can see the disappointment in their faces when I have to say no. And then in desperation, they'll ask me, well, was he ever here then? And again, up until recently, I would say no. But given that McEwen and he were both Edinburgh statesmen, they were both well known, they were both circulating in literary and political circles of their time, one running for the other one's seat in politics, both liberals, although the Liberal Party had split into two, and we know that William McEwen held civic and important meetings here in his house. The chances are that the two men did meet, but I need to find the evidence to prove that to you. What I will say is, if he wasn't here in body, he most certainly is here in spirit. I hope that you will come and join us one day and appreciate this beautiful building.